I'm coming at you with almost the full team today. I got the froggy. I got Stormy. Blue's under my desk. She may make an appearance any time now, but I promised you a rant warning, or I gave you a rant warning. I promised you a rant on this podcast. Uh, if you saw yesterday's video, you heard that message. <sighs> I don't like doing rants. Rants means I'm upset. Uh, even though I know it seems like from the views, people love rants. Uh, but I have a few things to share with you today because I don't want to spend my entire video there. But then we're going to go there because there's definitely something I need to call out. So I have so much to talk with you about today. We're going to talk about master detectives and what I mean when I say that. Oh, there it goes. What storm are you doing? What you doing, baby? Uh, oh, he's going to go attack his sister. That's what he's going to do. So we're going to talk about Master Detectives. We're talking about Lily Gladstone, the amazing actor that won, what was it, the Golden Globe for Flower, Killers of the Flower Moon. If you haven't seen it, you've got to see that. Then we're going to talk about what I'm ranting about. And last but not least, i got just a little, I don't know if I'd call it a teaching, but a, a heads up for you. So, we got a lot to talk about, so let's talk about it. Bonjour, Mishko Pagnon, Queen Edition of Mungdo Dem. Hi, everybody. My name is Sandy Boucher. I'm Red Thunderbolt Woman of the Loon Clan, a proud member of Seine River First Nation in Treaty 3 territory in Northern Ontario, and I just have one little goal in life. And that's to reconcile Canada. Hmm, just a small goal that we can achieve by Tuesday, don't you think? I am an Ishnabe Kwe. I am an Ojibwe female. And I work in First Nation communities. I work with non-Indigenous corporations to build bridges. For years, there has been training for Indigenous people on how to be successful in mainstream. But there was no corresponding training for non-Indigenous employers and agencies and entities that wanted to serve or work with Indigenous people. And that's where I come in. So a couple of things I wanted to talk to you about. I've been doing daily videos on YouTube now since I believe last October, November-ish, around there. In the very first seminar I ever did which is called The Day That Can Change Everything. And it is an empowerment uh, seminar. I still have people coming up to me telling me that they attended that seminar and it changed their life. It's all focused on empowerment, but it's rooted in my Anishinaabe teachings. What I, the tricks and tips and clues and actions I took in the the games I played with myself to come over the internalized oppression and just everything that took me from like poverty and total disempowerment and, and domestic violence to empowered and loving the woman I am. So if you're interested in that, go to sandyboucher.com. It's one of my video courses. You can find it in the shop. But as part of that seminar, one of the exercises we do is you become, I ask my participants to come become a master detective, to start getting in the habit of looking at things and what is this trying to tell me? For example, I ask them, if you end up with a tummy ache after lunch, what could be the lesson there? Um, it could be a lousy place to eat. Maybe you should find a different restaurant. Maybe you ate too quickly. You got to look at your time management. Maybe you're totally stressed about something and you should quit denying that and doing something about it. Maybe it was the company you were with. There's a bunch of different things you would know the answer for you. So that's what I mean about being a master detective. What I'm encouraging you to do as one of my loyal YouTube viewers, or if it's your first time here, welcome. I hope you enjoy it. Stick around. There's a lot to discuss. But if you're hanging out on my channel, I want you to start watching the comments, not to judge, not to condemn, but just watch because a lot of the people that follow my work or that I work with in the seminar 
are non-Indigenous Canadians that want to be part of reconciliation, but they really, because they're on that side of the bridge, they really don't understand what life is like for Indigenous people. So I want you to start watching the comments of what people feel comfy saying to me, Indigenous and non. So I want you to start watching for the other ring. They're talking about the other groups, not us, them. So where does ring, where does other ring come in? Well, racism. Nothing drives me nuts more than a so-called ally. And this is not even the rant part of this podcast. So mm. nothing drives me nuts more than a supposed ally of indigenous people coming on my channel and posting something attacking another group. That's not allyship. You are not freaking helping. Racism is racism is racism. And just because you are aiming your arrows at someone else doesn't make it any better. And indigenous people that do that, that just breaks my heart. Because now that's assimilation. Now you're doing what the colonizers did to us. Are you proud of yourself? Like, come on. We are better than that medicine wheel. There's room for all of us on the medicine wheel. So, <sighs> So watch for the racism. Start getting good at picking it out. Not to comment, not to condemn, but just, ah, uh, yeah, there's an example. Ah, uh, yeah, I haven't seen that before. I'm getting good at this. Another thing I want you to watch for, <coughs> excuse me, is classism. The attacking the impoverished or attacking the well-to-do condemning someone just because of the size of their bank account. We are better than that. And in fact, that was one of the things that took me so long to unpack. It is just for the record, in case you haven't figured it out yet. And if there's any indigenous people watching this, considering going into business, please hear me. You're going to need to do this. It is really hard to be successful in business if you have been taught that everyone that has money is a horrible person unconsciously you will fight against your own success unless you unpack that guess what i discovered now that i'm a successful business person there are poor people that are let's go with the word jerks not the word i would use in conversation but we're going to say jerks today and there's amazing people that are poor there are rich people that are total jerks they're also amazing people that are rich and every group in between. So classism does not make sense. Watch for it in the comments. Another one, and this one, it, it goes against my teachings, even though I'd be willing to bet <clears throat> a lot of indigenous people haven't realized that yet. Nationalism, the looking after our own before we think of everyone else, our own are human beings. There is one globe, one planet. Those lines that people die for between countries are imaginary lines on a map. If you poison your water and it's flowing across the border, you're gonna poison my water too. And just cause you think you have the right in your country, doesn't even make sense in mine. So any kind of nationalism. I know a lot of indigenous people that have an issue. And before you judge, hear everything I have to say, please. I know a lot of indigenous people that have an issue with newcomers. That they don't like the fact that they assume mega dollars are being spent to bring refugees to Canada largely because of the conditions in our first nation communities and they figure like if you can spend that money over there why not look after your own indigenous people in your backyard why isn't that money coming to us do you actually really believe it has to be an either or like come on now <laughs> the government would love us to believe that you can do both and honestly, the type of person I want to be, the type of woman my mom raised me to be, if there's some family somewhere that's at risk of getting bombed and dying, my door is open. Come on in. We don't let people die. Don't be, you know what? If you want people to care about the fact that your kids might die, you should probably start caring about the fact that other people's kids are dying. 
you know, I'm going to talk about there, that at the end, but you know what? Practice what you preach <laughs> and how you want people to treat you. They deserve nothing less. Now, I am a huge advocate. I'm going to use the word hate again. I know people hate it when I use the word hate, but I have long said hate the person, not the group. If I meet an, I almost said it again, jerk. If I meet a jerk, he's a jerk. Not every person like him, not every person that practices his religion or comes from the same country as him or whatever the case may be. Him, him, he has to carry the weight of that. Him, her, whoever. And that wasn't even the rant part. So there's your challenge. I want you to become a master detective. You know what? And, and just because it would make my day, it would make me so happy. When you notice racism, sexism, nationalism, um, any of those, classism, just type, I see it. I'll know what you mean. And that's going to make me super happy. Yeah, I might have to do that really quickly because depending on how bad the post is or the comment is, I'm going to delete it because this is a safe space. And if it's really bad, I'm blocking the user. Trust me, I've been doing that since the day I got on YouTube. I have zero issue doing that. That's an example of how to create a safe space. If you don't defend it, it's not a safe space. It's just a promise that doesn't mean anything. So let's become master detectives. I am literally one every single day. What is the lesson here? What is Crater trying to teach me? Mom taught me that ages ago. Next one, I have a link in the description below this video, and it is Lily Gladstone. So she just won the Golden Globe for F Killers of the Flower Moon, which I saw it effing amazing. You got to watch it. But the link is not about that win. She's actually, it's she's accepting an award for at Variety's Power of Women event. And... Um, yeah, there's Leo DiCaprio speaks first and then her. I'm not showing the Leo part, just Lily Gladstone's part. There's something in that video that I had no idea. Um, so in the States, which is totally different than us, in their reservations, reserves up here, reservations down there, um, they have tribal police. <coughs> Oh, I knocked my little fuzzy off my... Sorry about that. I need water. I have no water. <clears throat> so, she was talking about the tribal police. We have indigenous police services up here. Some res reserves have them, some not. But what she explained was in the States, the tribal police, if someone came, a non-indigenous, non-native, non, -native, non Indian person came into one of their reservations and did something, broke the law, hurt someone, attacked someone, whatever, the tribal police do not have the authority to arrest a non-member of the reservation. That it's up to the FBI. So they're going to send the FBI in to do that. That's just a recipe for disaster. Such a disaster. So that blew me away, but it's not the part I wanted to comment on today. She made a comment. Now, if you've seen Killers of the Flower Moon, it's based in history. The Osage First Nation um, struck oil. And what happened almost immediately afterwards is all of these snakes, icky people, users, abusers, whatever, I can't think of a term, icky people, <laughs> came in and started, like they were literally marrying Osage women to get their inheritance, to get their hands on their money, and in some cases, unaliving them. So she made the comment that it becomes, are you ready for this? Because this is where, again, my work came into, I was like, wait a minute, what? Resource-rich nations. It becomes the resource-rich nations versus the vultures. There's a word I was looking for, vultures. I see that in Canada. 
Look at the ring of fire in Northern Ontario. Suddenly, uh, Canada wants to be best buds with those First Nations. We'll build you a road, that one you've been asking for forever. You're not doing it because the First Nations asked. You're doing it because you're trying to get to the minerals you want, right? You want to dig up the planet, dig up Mother Earth, and then you're not doing anything once you run out of minerals. Or if the price went down, you would... Like how many First Nations, Indigenous people, their lives are harmed by tailing ponds left behind. Um, yeah, so that really got me thinking that like so often Indigenous First Nation communities in Canada are invisible until there's something on that territory Canada wants. And then the vultures show up and it's two face to the nines. We're going to make these promises. We're going to be your partner only for as long as they get what they want. And in my definition, that's not a partnership. That's a user. Hmm. Canada, we can do better. Speaking of Canada and doing better, I'm going to control myself now because we got to go into the rant part of this podcast. I get emails from so many people that watch my YouTube videos and I, I've had calls from elders thanking me for my work. I am sorry as Anishina Bekwe, as an indigenous woman, when an elder tells you good job, <laughs> that's the same as praise from my mom. That's when you know you're on the right path and it's fuel to do more. Love, love, love it. And then every now and then I have someone emailing me hmm, that in some cases they think they're an ally, but there's definitely problematic things in their email. And I don't attack. I point it out. These things have to be corrected. These things have to be clarified. Some people are okay with that. Some people will argue with me, which can we put your ego aside for a minute? And other people just get blatantly upset and want to race off. So I received an email. I actually received two emails. This was a while ago. I had to actually calm down enough to be able to talk about this with you. I received an email from a person, don't know them from a hole in the ground, that often happens. They saw my videos, they like my work, blah, blah, blah. And they would be very, they were interested to find out if I'd be interested in working with them. So the person that, it's lunchtime, huh. So the person that emailed me was part of a group of people. So long story short, what they were advocating for was scrapping Canada. Basically saying, you know what, it was built all wrong. There is no fixing it. We need to start from zero we think you would love this idea. Would you like to join us? WTF. <laughs> so I can honestly say I ignored the first email. Some emails are not worth responding to. And I was super busy. So it was like, you know what? That one's getting lost in the shuffle. Thinking that would be the end of it. I was wrong. They emailed again. This person emailed again. And wanted to explain more maybe did i lose the email did i see it blah 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 so now i figured okay now you open the door now you need to hear what i have to say and the first thing that came to mind was how effing convenient would it be to start a new country let's just pretend that all that stuff that happened to indigenous people that didn't didn't happen let's not worry about amends or building the bridge or making up for what we did we're just going to start from zero how effing convenient would the power balance be different in this new country of yours would indigenous people have equal say would indigenous nations have reps in the house of commons and in the senate like like provinces do and territories do hmm would we have equal power no apologies no amends we're just going to pretend the history didn't happen like you know what i i always go to the metaphor you know that 
If you're in a relationship with someone and it's been super, super rough and you go to your partner and say, you know what, let's just start over. Let's pretend none of that happened. And you're the one that had inflicted pain on them. For one, how fair is that to them? Two, even if they agreed, do you honestly think they're just going to pretend or be able to pretend? And why should they have to forget that you hurt them with no amends? That is such the easy road. Are the systems going to change? The processes that excluded us? Are those going to change? We have to fix. There is no starting zero. And you know what? These are the people I'd be willing to bet. I don't know this for sure, but I've heard this story before. These are the people that say things like, well, I never sent anyone to residential school. Why should I have to worry about this? Because you inherited the systems that benefit people like you and that exclude people like me. That's why we all inherited this. No one started at day one. We inherited the good and the bad from those that came before. And now we got to grow up and put on our big girl panties and deal. Or your big guy gitch or whatever you want to say. So, if anyone in your world thinks that's a great and wonderful idea, <laughs> um, you can send them this video, I guess. I think I controlled myself quite well. Quite proud of myself. Last but not least... I said I wanted to share something with you, something that I've definitely learned over the years of my career, definitely something that I think holds true across the board. And it is the fact that people will live up to the bar you set for them. If you're working with someone and you just think they're a no good, lazy, never do their job, all you're going to see is examples to back up what you think of them. And if they pick up on what you think of them. They're not even going to try anymore. They're just going to meet the bar you set for them. But if you tell that youngster you believe in them and you believe they can have any dream they want, they're going to get their chest puffed up and they're going to try their damnedest to do it. Why am I sharing this with you? Because I've set a high bar for Canada and for the people on this channel. I believe there may be information that you need that you don't have access to. I can give you that information. My, But I believe in Canada, in Canadians, that they can learn and that things can change. I've dedicated my life to that work and I meet people every single day that prove I'm right. There are the trolls. There are the idiots. There are the people that want a whole new country they're not too far away from the wall. They don't get it for the wall metaphor that I mentioned in, in another video. And that's okay. I don't expect everyone to get it, but there are enough people that do get it or are trying to get it that keep me going every single day. So I want you to be super duper careful. It is so easy to judge. It is so easy to condemn. That's cheap seats. That's not you in the arena making a difference. That's cheap seats. What I want you to do is set the bar for the people in your world and not down in the basement. Set it high. Expect that. You're going to be surprised how often you receive that. So there you go. What did we talk about? We talked about being a master detective. We talked about Lily Gladstone and the vultures that are going after the resource-rich First Nations. We talked about this concept of creating a new country. We talked about setting the bar for people. I hope you enjoyed this podcast episode. I hope you got something beneficial out of it. I know I enjoyed my time with you. Until next week, I love you. Take care. Bye-bye.